Every week, it seems like there's a brand new sub-ohm clear-o on the market. Well, this week's no different, because we're gonna take a look at the Horizon Tech Arctic. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, and welcome back to this edition of the Vapor Chronicles. What can I say? We have more sub-ohm clearos to review here. I picked up the Horizon Tech Arctic sub ohm and I picked this up for my local brick and mortar. Uh, I like to support local shops. You pay a little extra, but you get better service. This has a lot of buzz. I mean, every reviewer has been reviewing it lately. Everybody's been talking about how it vapes. And it vapes really, really well. It's a great sub ohm clear miser but not without its flaws and not without competition. So tonight we're gonna to take it, we're gonna review it, we're gonna zoom in, we're gonna break it down and we're gonna give you my analysis and I'm gonna tell you what I think of it. Let's have some coffee because it's freaking cold out. Mm. If anybody wants to know what, what kind of coffee I like, I like Starbucks. Uh, I have a Keurig upstairs and uh, I love Sumatra. Christmas blend, anniversary blend, a little bit of cream, a little bit of sugar, and that hits the spot for me with a nice tasty vape. Um, in New Jersey today, it is cold as hell, and it is ice freezing, rain, sleet, snowing. So the roads are shit, and I'm here in the basement just trying to bust out some reviews, watching some reviews, and just enjoying uh, vaping as I always do. So let's do this. Before any more blubber from me. Let's zoom in. Let's take a look at this Horizon Tech Arctic and uh, let's take it for a vape. All right, so here's the outside of the package. And as you can see, I have the 0.5 ohm bottom turbine coil in my package. On the outside of the package, it says organic cotton. <clears throat> um, it also has the authenticity scratch, some instructions for refilling. And you'll notice here at the bottom, it does have a somewhat of a disclaimer about using the correct battery uh, with the device, but I wish there was more like a sticker on here that had a warning, um, you know, for battery safety and making sure you have the correct regulated or unregulated device uh, to work with this tank. All right, so let's open this up. That's basically what you have. You have your spare coil head, you have your tank with a coil in it already. All right, let's uh, go over some specs for the device. It's made out of 304 stainless steel and Pyrex glass, 100% organic cotton wicking, 100% USA made canthal, three milliliter juice capacity, four times three millimeter airflow holes, comes with two bottom vertical coils. You might notice a little bit of moisture in the inside of the tank. I've been vaping on this for a few days now. So your airflow control is on the bottom here and you can see this is the uh, three millimeter airflow hole, three millimeter air hole, three millimeter air hole. So there's four of those around the bottom of the tank. Now this tank has the Arctic from Horizon Tech logo right there. bottom Pyrex glass removable drip tip and your 510 with a little moisture on the bottom So to take this off, you want to take your drip tip off and you would just unscrew. Now you can adjust the position of your airflow holes just by turning them like this to whatever suits your airflow preference. So let's unscrew this counterclockwise. And this would be how you would fill the tank and also change your coil head. So to fill, you would just fill into the holes here on the sides 
until it fills up to the top without going above that line right there. Now to remove your glass, they don't give you a spare glass and I haven't been able to find them yet, but this does unscrew counterclockwise. This comes out, there's your chimney, and you can see it screws in here. You wanna make sure you don't lose your rubber gasket that's right here at the top. It's actually stuck onto the glass. There's rubber, and then here's your glass piece here. All right, and this is press fitted with the threads here and the threads from the top of the tank here where the chimney section is and you just screw it back on if you needed to replace your glass and I'm sure they're gonna have replacements. So there you have that. Make sure it's nice and snug. And to remove your coil head, you just grab a hold of your base, grab the coil head, unscrew counterclockwise, it comes out. And let's put it in a new one so I can do a fresh review with some fresh juice. I'll show you how to fill this. All right, so here's the coil head. And like I said, I have the single vertical coil in this kit that I purchased. And you can see there's large, four large air holes at the bottom and huge wicking channels here and here. So there's two. And you can see there's the vertical coil with the organic cotton. So to put this in, you just want to grab your base, stick it in, screw clockwise till it's snug, and there you have it. Now before filling this tank, what I would recommend you do is you grab your juice of choice. For this, I'm going to be using some Strawzilla from a local vape shop in Delaware that my wife she went in there and was buying some stuff and they were nice enough to give her some samples for me to try, which is very generous of them. And it was from Fog Vapes. So this is the Strawzilla from Fog Vapes. You just want to drip a little bit. You want to drip some juice into the, the coil head when it's new, just to get it nice and saturated. So you don't dry hit when you first fire this up. You'll notice that the organic cotton starts to get saturated on the side where the, uh, the juice channels are. All right, so filling it up. It's relatively easy. Grab your juice, grab your tank, and I usually put it at an angle like this. And just squeeze right into the opening here. Put your base back in with your saturated coil head. Screw clockwise till it's nice and snug. Have your handy Vapor's Best Friend paper towel so you can wipe off any residual juice that might have spilled or gotten on your hands or on the table. You also want to be careful when you're filling your tanks and you're really dealing with anything that contains nicotine. Just be careful that you don't have any of your pets around, you don't have any kids around, and you clean up properly because the flavors and the aromas can attract animals and children and you don't want to get them sick or who knows what else. But just be careful and vape responsibly. Alright, so there you have it. So the tank is filled. You want to give it some time to sort of 
watch those bubbles rise from the bottom and I would give it a couple primer pulls once you put your drip tip back on close the airflow off I usually close it off all the way and I give it about 10 pulls and just let it sit for about 10 minutes and uh, then we'll zoom back out and we'll take it for a bait all right all right guys so you saw the up close the one thing that really sticks out for me is this is a good looking tank I love the little notches on the top and on the bottom uh, the airflow adjustment control is nice and smooth it's solid it takes a little bit of effort but it gives you nice control over the openings of the airflow you know what let me let me stop for a minute <clears throat> it seems like there's a lot of confusion going on in the world of vaping right now and I want to clear it up just a little bit and give you my perspective sub ohm has become the new gold standard at local brick and mortars local vape shops I get comments all the time from people that pick up a sub ohm tank and they say things like this Brian I picked up my blah 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 and man it's just really hot the vapors hot it's it's you know um, it makes me cough I don't enjoy it okay there's a reason for that the intention of the sub ohm coil and the sub ohm regulated devices or unregulated devices was never intended to be for everyone to get satisfaction you don't have to sub ohm you know what you get from sub ohm you get a higher juice bill at the end of the month or the end of the day okay you can on a, on a tank like this you can suck through 30 milliliters of juice in a day I don't know about you but I'm not made of money so that gets a really really expensive and also, you know, if you just quit smoking or maybe if you quit a long time ago and you're vaping and you're used to a Nautilus Mini, this is going to be like a hot steam bath of vapor and you're not going to enjoy it. It's not going to be for you. sub is not for everybody. I do like the fact that companies have decided to give vapors the choice of a coil for the different vaping preferences that we all have. A 1.2 ohm coil might be more satisfying for somebody that wants a cooler, less, uh, you know, uh, less intense vaping experience. When I say less intense and less heat, I don't mean less satisfying. Satisfaction comes from your preferences. Satisfaction comes from, you know, you might be able to vape at 30 watts with one type of juice and you might prefer it at 40 watts with another type of juice. You might like a hot vape in the more or in the evening with, you know, after dinner with your coffee and you might like a warm vape in the morning. The beauty and the joy of the current state of vaping in the world is that we have variety. We have choice. We have selection. The problem is, is that it takes time to learn the basics and to to really experience things you don't like and that usually costs money so if you've been spending your vape budget and you've been getting stuff that doesn't really satisfy you don't feel bad because you're not alone we all go through it it's a learning curve to find out what works for you and what you enjoy so anyway let's continue with uh, i'm going to end my little rant and let's continue with this review and let's take it for a vape so right now 40 watts. Now I swapped the juice because the up close you saw was uh, yesterday. So today I have Charlie Noble's custard, which love it uh, in here. I think it's around an 80 VG. I think 78 or 80 VG. Um, high VG. I like high VG. It produces a more sweet, fluffy cloud, and it also takes the um, the coil heat or the, the the low resistance coils with the higher wattage better, in my opinion. So that's my preference. Uh, also, with these big open juice channels that are in these sub ohm uh, um, coil heads, they flow juice like crazy. When I use like a 50 50, it just goes too quick in. It, it sucks it right in and it sometimes floods the coil head. Sometimes I get juice spitting up in my mouth. It pops too much. So, using a higher VG juice with these big open uh, flow juice channels, I like that much better. My preference. But let's take it for a bit. 40 watts. It's reading 0.55 ohms, 3.7 volts, and let's take it for a vape, see what we think. So 
So it's great. The flavor is excellent. Vapor production is phenomenal. Airflow, very open. Um, not the most open tank on the market, by the way. You know what? Let's we're going to compare it in a minute to other tanks. Airflow, and because I know a lot of you vapor chasers that like to produce a ton of vapor, like a ton of airflow, kind of like an uh, a dripper. And let's see how this stacks up against the other competitors. But the flavor is excellent on these uh, coil heads, and they keep up. I mean, you can chain vape at 40 watts on this 0.5 ohm coil head all day long. I mean, it's not going to dry hit. Let's, let's raise this up a little bit to, let's go to 50 watts. All right, so we have 50 watts. It's reading 5.24 volts, and let's get, take it for a bit. Warmer vape, more vapor production. Actually, a little bit more flavor, so I kind of like that. It's very good. All right, so airflow, Delta 2, the Whistler as I call it. <clears throat> and remember, I, w I wish there was some sort of a machine that could you know, suck in and read how much airflow you know, these tanks uh, you took in, but I don't. So this is obviously you know, very, uh, per it's my personal opinion about airflow. They're very close, very close. Maybe the Horizon uh, or the Arctic has a slight edge there against the Delta II. Let's go to the, let's check this out. This is the Vapor Chaser tank from Smoke. Let's open that up. Vapor Chaser tank from Smoke has more airflow. The Aspire um, Atlantis with the five milliliter extender. Yeah, this is open all the way. Atlantis has more airflow. Uh, you know. Now, I must say that the Arctic does have better um, flavor than the Atlantis, no doubt about it. So here is the sub tank mini. I don't know, everybody's been raving about this Arctic having the best airflow out of all these tanks. And maybe it's because I have the, the 0.5 um, single vertical coil, but the sub tank mini has better airflow too. Uh, you know. And I bought this, so I have no opinion other than my own from vaping this. Uh, the clouds are great. The tank's built well. It looks good. But as far as like the best, you know, dripper-like experience on a Clearo, no. It's just not that. All right. Next up, the Freemax Star. Okay, compared to every single tank that I've done the airflow test on today, the Freemax Star has by far the best open airflow. So now you might hate open airy draw. So if you don't like airflow, this would not be for you. But as far as airflow goes, Freemax Star, the king of the pre-built coil head clearos by far. All right, so let's, uh, more coffee. So let's talk about things I like, things I don't like, and break that down. Number one, the things I like, I think that the build quality on this is excellent. Uh, the tank is a sexy looking, um, sleek, nice looking tank. Uh, 
So that's a win, definitely on this. The flavor is excellent on this. I cannot complain about the flavor whatsoever. Great maple production, great flavor replication, uh, keeps up with the juice flow. So those are all definite positives. Also, it's really easy to refill this tank. I love how easy it is to take the bottom off. You have those two large holes on the side. It fills it up right to the top. Uh, simple to refill, so that's another plus. Neutral. Not good, not bad, just personal. This thing sucks a ton of juice. All sub-ohm tanks that vape at 0 0.5, 0 0.2 uh, resistance, they're going to suck juice like crazy. So you better have a good job or have mommy and daddy money because let me tell you something. If you like to sub-ohm vape and that's your daily all go-to, you're going to have a huge budget for juice. So find low, lower cost vendors. If you want a good premium low cost vendor, Charlie Noble Juice is phenomenal. Look it up, it's tasty. This does not have the best airflow in the market. Not everybody's into airflow, so that's not really a negative per se. It's personal preference. It has excellent airflow. If it was six months ago, this would have the best airflow in the market. But competition, choice, variety, um, but it ranks up there even with flavor production, okay? It's in the top you know, five with airflow adjustment. So those are sort of in the middle, depending on what you like and what you dislike. The dislikes. Number one, I do not like the three milliliter juice capacity of the tank. I like to have four and a half, five milliliter juice capacity. It makes it easier, so I'm not, especially with the way these things drink juice, I like to be able to have some time to vape before I have to refill it, refill it, refill it, refill it. So personally, I want a bigger tank. And also for the size of it, you know, it's smaller. So if you like a smaller tank, then three milliliters is gonna work well for you. This is the Atlantis five milliliters. You can see it's much taller. Um, you know, and this is your, your Delta is almost identical, your Delta two in size. Another negative, the fact that they didn't include an extra glass tank, I wish they would have. These things can break. It's nice to have a spare on hand. So that's sort of a negative in my book because the competitors uh, provide extra glass tanks with theirs. Another drawback or negative, I wish it had an RBA section. People like to have that ability to maybe learn how to build co rebuild coils. Uh, they like the option of saving money and twisting their own wire, uh, wicking themselves. So having an RBA option, I think that would be really nice. Looking at the coil head, I do believe that it should be able to be rewicked and rewired yourself. I haven't done it yet. Maybe I'll make a video in the future. We'll see if I have time. But RBA option, even if we had to buy it, would have been a nice additional, and maybe they'll add it in the future, so we'll see. So besides that, the price range is between $35 and $45, give or take, depending if you buy it local brick and mortar, if you buy it online. So you, know, you wanna hunt out what's a priority to you. you want service when you pick it up? Do you want it to be available the day you want it? Or do you want to order, you know, maybe in China and get it even cheaper, but you have to wait three weeks to get it? It's really about your choice, whatever you want. Um, but can I recommend the Arctic? Yes. It's a quality tank. I, I'm going to vape it. It's good. You know, by the way, all these tanks, you'll notice my, this is my other star. This is my mini from my, uh, my sub tank, my Atlantis. Notice how they all have juice in them. They all have juice in them because I, I appreciate each and every one of them for their strengths. I vape these all in my daily rotation. I'm always swapping tanks. You know, sometimes I get tired of a lot of airflow and I want a uh, tighter draw. So it really depends on my mood. They're all good. If you have one, don't jump out and buy every single one because it's a waste of money. They're all good. So anyway, that's it. Arctic from Horizon Tech. It's a quality tank. I, I really don't have that much bad to say about it except for the few little things that I said that are personal preference. But it does what it says, and I'm looking forward to getting some more of the um, other coil heads to give them a run. So run out and pick it up. Uh, also, I'm gonna recommend, besides all this, instead of fighting for which sub -ohm tank is the best, why don't you go out and support your right to vape? Go to www.casaa.org and, uh, and join the ranks of us who also fight for our right to vape as if our lives depend on it, because they do. 
You can also find me on the web at www.thevaporchronicles.com. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, subscribe today. I need all the subscribers I can get. I love bringing you guys content. I love the support. I'm appreciative. And that just motivates me to get more products and do the best reviews that I can possibly do. So thank you very much. I will see you very soon. Have an awesome week. It's Sunday, so tomorrow you, everyone goes back to work if you work. And uh, have a wonderful week. I have more content coming this week. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>